In the previous video, we looked at how to differentiate a function in order to find the gradient of a line. And in this video, we're going to look at how we integrate a function in order to find the area under a line or the area under the graph. So this time in the top left hand corner, we have a velocity time graph. So we have time on the x axis and we have velocity on the y axis. And we could use this graph to find a number of things. We could, for example, differentiate the function and find the gradient of this graph at any point, and the gradient of the graph would represent dv by dt. Recall that gradients are normally calculated as change in y over change in x, but when we have a velocity time graph, the gradient represents dv by dt. So dv by dt would give us the gradient at any point on this graph. Now, if we just inspect that term, dv by dt, change in velocity with respect to time is acceleration. So we could differentiate our velocity function in order to find the acceleration at given times. But we're going to approach things a little bit differently this time, and we're going to use integration. And by using integration, we can find the area under a curve. So in this example, we want to find the distance travelled in the first two and a half seconds of motion for this object. So the first thing that we need to do is consider what that's actually asking us. If we have a velocity time graph and we want distance, distance is velocity times time. And if we're multiplying these two variables together, so we're multiplying our velocity on the y-axis by our time on the x-axis, then what we're actually finding is the area under the function here. Well, when we need to find areas under functions, what we need to do is integrate the function with respect to time. So we have our function for v here, but what we want to do is find the integral of v with respect to time. That will give us velocity times time. So the first term that we need to integrate is 7.5. It's just a standard function. So when we integrate something, we raise the power by 1 and we divide by the new power. Well, in this case, when we raise the power by 1, we end up with 7.5t to the 1, or just 7.5t. And dividing through by 1 would mean our coefficient is still 7.5. You can check this because if you were to differentiate 7.5t to the 1, then it would return back to the 7.5 that we had before integration. Recall that differentiation and integration are the opposites of each other, or the inverses of each other. The next function that we need to integrate is 1.5t squared in our original function. So when we integrate that, we raise the power of t by 1, which will give us t cubed, and then we divide by the new power. So our coefficient of 1.5 in the original function needs to be divided by 3. Well, 1.5 divided by 3 is just 0.5. And finally, we have our exponential to integrate. Well, when we integrate the exponential, we need to divide the coefficient of the function by the coefficient of the exponential power of t. So minus 7.5 divided by minus 3 equals 2.5. So we have 2.5 e to the minus 3t. The power of the exponential remains the same. If this was an indefinite integral, we would have to include a constant, but we have a definite integral. We want the distance travelled in the first 2.5 seconds. So our boundaries are when time equals 0 and time equals 2.5. Our boundaries are 0 2.5. And the way that we represent that and show that this is a definite integral rather than an indefinite integral is using square brackets and we need to add our boundaries on the outside of the second square bracket. So to evaluate this integral we need to find the value of the square bracket when t equals 2.5 and then we need to subtract the value of the square bracket when t equals 0. So let's do that now. We have 7.5 times 2.5 
plus 0.5 times 2.5 cubed. All I'm doing is replacing t here with 2.5 and t here with 2.5. And then for our third term, we have 2.5 e to the minus 3 times 2.5. And then from that, I need to subtract 7.5 times 0, which is just going to be 0, but we'll write it anyway, plus 0.5 times 0 cubed, which is also going to be 0, plus 2.5e to the minus 3 times 0. Well, minus 3 times 0 is just going to be 0, but again, we'll write that out. So evaluating my first bracket, I get 26.564. And for my second bracket, I get 2.5. Therefore, the value of the integral between the limits of 0 and 2.5 equals 24.064. So 24.064 represents the shaded region on our graph, but more importantly, what it represents is S, the distance travelled. And we know that because we defined at the start that the area under the graph was the distance, and we've used integration to find the area under the graph, which in this instance is 24.064.